Designed by architects Morelli and Melvin, and built by Robertson and Kane, this outstanding, single-owner 2011 Leopard 46 is a world-class blue water cruising catamaran that combines a stylish, comfortable and spacious living accommodation, high-quality construction and great performance. Featuring four private staterooms, each with cupboards and wide shelves, a privacy door and an ensuite head comprising a toilet, a mirrored vanity and a separate shower cubicle. Plus two additional four-peak berths, it can sleep eight people comfortably. It has an above-water stylish saloon, with a table to seat eight and which provides a bunk conversion for overnight passages. A fully fitted modern galley with double sink and a full-size forward-facing navigation station, complete with all the necessary offshore communications and electronic instrumentation, including an additional chart plotter, autopilot control and multifunction display, a VHF radio and a SSBHF radio. This yacht comes fully equipped with twin Yanmar 54 horsepower engines, Raymarine Electronics, Northern Lights Generator, Wind and Solar Power, 600 amp hour lithium house battery bank, Spectra 12 volt water maker, Victron 2 kilowatt inverter charger, and air conditioning, to mention just a few of her features. The raised helm station provides excellent visibility and ease of maneuvering, while the generous cockpit and aft bathing platform, between the two transoms, provides a wonderful outdoor space as well as easy access to the yacht. The cockpit seating area includes custom-made cushions around a large table and three lazarettes for storage. There are two sail, line, and fender lockers forward, one port and one starboard, housing the generator and water tanks respectively. Whilst this yacht has been immaculately maintained, it also features numerous upgrades and enhancements undertaken over the years. We have two large lockers just after the trampoline. One houses the fresh water tanks with a total capacity of about 800 liters. Adjacent to the water tank is the locker that houses the galvanized steel anchor chain overall length of 100 meters. There's also a lever that directs the water maker water to either of the water tanks. Additionally, there is the on off tap for the fresh water wash down outlet. The other locker houses the Northern Lights generator inside a soundproof enclosure. The battery compartment is also located in this locker, housing our 600 amp hour lithium battery. We also store miscellaneous items in this locker. In the middle we have an S140 spade anchor, attached by a Mantis high strength stainless steel swivel to the anchor chain. The fresh water washroom outlet is located just above the anchor. The chain is controlled by a quick Hector 1000 watt windlass with a handheld remote control. On deck there's a foot switch for raising the anchor in case the handheld control fails. On the helm station roof and the cockpit hardtop we have 1000 watts of solar power in the form of flat solar panels. The panels are controlled by the Victron solar controller. This is the port side of the hardtop looking aft. You can see the 400 watt wind generator mounted on the aft step and secured to the hardtop. In the cockpit there are four storage lockers. This one houses our 12 man life raft, certified until September 2026. This locker does not have a latch, in the unlikely event of a capsize, the life raft would fall out of the locker. This side of the cockpit houses the propane tanks and solenoid and a pressure gauge indicating the quantity of remaining gas. Adjacent to the gas locker is where we store the Danforth anchor with attached chain and road. Additionally it houses the 5 kVA step down transformer. This we used in parts of the world where 110 volts was unavailable. The fourth locker in the cockpit stows the delta anchor, drogue and road, and the shore power cables. For extended passages, we carry emergency diesel and water. Normally these jerry cans are empty and stowed in the four-peak crew cabin.
The running rigging is all fairly new, we replace sheets and halyards whenever they look a little tatty. The same goes for blocks, rope clutches, shackles, Genoa cars, and the main sheet car. The standing rigging was replaced in May 2023 and inspected, and tuned in September 2023 to ensure optimal performance. Our main sail is the standard Leopard 46 specification, but with a third reefing point. The current sail on the furler is a custom-made 150% Genoa, which is perfect for downwind sailing. On the trampoline we currently have our spinnaker rigged, additionally we have an ATN gale sail, with attached sheets, which hangs over the Genoa. Furthermore we have a factory specification Genica of approximately 150 square meters, stored in a locker within its own sock. Finally we have the standard 130% Genoa which we switch out when sailing to weather. The helm station has a fully enclosed weather guard, with sections that can be rolled up as required and clear plastic for visibility in less favorable weather conditions. There are two primary winches, the electronic displays, the engine control panels, and a compass. Additionally there is a bilge pump audible alarm, a fuel transfer switch that transfers fuel from the starboard tank to the port tank, and helm station and cockpit light switches. At present, we have the spinnaker sheet rigged to the helm station. You will also see the rope clutches for the port Genoa sheet, main sheet and a spare clutch that is used for either the main halyard or the spinnaker halyard. There is also the external GPS antenna used by the AIS transceiver. On this side of the helm there's a main sheet clutch and the starboard Genoa sheet clutch. To the rear of the helm station is the traveler, and the winch and rope clutches to adjust the position of the main sail car. At the enclosed helm station, we have a Raymarine E97 hybrid touch chart plotter with two micro SD card slots, two I-70 display units and a P-70 autopilot control unit. Inside the starboard engine compartment, we have the ICOM AT140 antenna tuner and the ground plane for the ICOM SSB radio. For us, the forward-facing navigation station of the Leopard 46 was an essential feature. Here we have an A65 chart plotter, AP70 autopilot control unit, an AI70 display, an ICOM M802 SSB radio, an ICOM M604 VHF radio with a remote microphone at the helm station. This is all coupled to the SeaTalk NG backbone. The two chart plotters and the Raymarine color radar connect to a Raymarine high-speed switch, thus allowing the chart plotters to share a single electronic chart. Other features include an Iridium Go, ship's clock and barometer, sound system controller, and numerous USB charging ports. At the saloon bulkhead there's a Raymarine 650 AIS, antenna splitter, solar controller, and circuit breaker switches for the solar power. Here we have the DC panel, followed by the generator remote control panel, the AC panel, three air conditioning remote controls, a Victron battery monitor and inverter remote control fridge and freezer electronic controls and the switch for the masthead tricolor and anchor light. 
Underneath the galley sink there's the Raymarine Type 2 rotary drive, you can see the steering cables passing over the two sheaves. Behind the cover is the Raymarine Evolution EV400 autopilot computer and sensor pack, connected to the Raymarine Sea Talk NG backbone. The Leopard 46 engine compartment is completely isolated from the aft cabin. There's no need to get under a bunk to perform engine maintenance. There's sufficient space around the engine for an adult to service or repair the power unit. This is the port side Yangmar 4JH5E, 4 cylinder, 54 horsepower diesel engine. There's dual raker filters, one filter connected to the engine fuel line, the other filter connected to the fuel polisher. We have two lift pumps, one for the generator and the other for the fuel polisher. At the top of the engine compartment there's a panel with the wind generator controller with an on-off switch, the fuel polisher electronic timer with an override switch, the Victron lithium battery combiner with a manual override switch, plus a Hobbs meter. Connected to the engine is the standard SD50 sail drive with a FlexoFold 3 blade folding propeller. Here we have the same setup on the starboard side, with the Yang Mafa JH5E diesel engine. We also use this space to store empty fuel containers. Slightly less complicated on this side, once again two raker filters, an electronic timer for the fuel polishing system and the Victron lithium battery combiner. Here's a close-up view of the SD50 sail drive. These engines have been impeccably maintained, with new engine mounts, upper sail drive oil seals replaced, serviced fuel injectors and lapped cone clutches when required, along with regular oil changes on the engines and sail drives. This is a Northern Lights M773 LW3 diesel generator housed in a soundproof container providing 110 volts AC to the yacht, used to power the air conditioning system, hot water heaters and battery chargers when required. This is the starboard side four-peak cabin or crew cabin that houses our Spectra water maker. This is a Spectra Cape Horn Extreme water maker, producing between 50 and 60 liters per hour, depending on the salinity of the sea water. It runs off 12 volts and can be powered by solar alone. It has dual filters, a lift pump feeding the dual high-pressure pumps. The desalinated water passed through a UV filter before reaching the water tank. It's completely manual, there's no expensive electronics to repair or replace. The water maker uses a dedicated through hull for the salt water intake and an above waterline brine discharge. The water maker compartment has a dedicated bilge pump and float switch, and is completely isolated from the interior living space in the unlikely event of a leak. The built-in salinity meter allows us to check the quality of the water, and if it's acceptable we flip the lever and tank the water. This is a view of the cockpit area of this Leopard 46. There's sufficient space to seat 9, possibly 10 people comfortably for our Fisco dining. On hot sunny days, the entire cockpit can be shaded with sunscreens. There are dual Bose outdoor speakers, connected to the sound system controls at the navigation station allowing you to stream your favorite music. Here, we're looking at the sliding doors between the cockpit and saloon. Both floors are at the same level, giving a wonderful feeling of indoor-outdoor living.
This particular model of the Leopard 46 has access to the helm station from within the cockpit. For us, this was a major safety benefit. We don't have to leave the cockpit and walk around on the outside of the deck to access the helm. A major factor for us purchasing this yacht is the helm station roof. It is a hard top with a clear window to view the main sail and mast headwind vane. Additionally, the helm station provides excellent visibility and protection from the weather. This is a view of the cockpit from within the saloon, going back through the sliding doors. Let's walk around the galley area. Here we have a pop-out trash can, which sits underneath a black Corian raised bar style countertop. On the other side, we have access to the trash can through the round pop-out lid. The galley is fitted with dual stainless steel sinks and a swivel type faucet with a pull-out hose. Underneath the wooden spoon holder there's a removable cover, exposing a drying sink that may also be used as a storage area. There's one fan mounted in the corner of the galley. There are two medium-sized cupboards above the sink. There's a three-burner stainless steel gas stove with an oven and grill. There's a small storage area underneath the stove with a large cupboard to the side. The seat of the navigation station provides additional storage for small items such as tools. There's also a book cupboard underneath the navigation station desk. The saloon has a full-size dining table with space to seat eight people comfortably. There is a 12-volt TV with USB and IMEA connections, with an additional fan in the top corner and an EPIRB alongside. Below the electrical panel there's a separate fridge and freezer with Seafrost multi-speed digital controls. The area under the saloon cushions provides additional storage, with the air conditioner unit, solar controllers inverter and battery chargers under the center cushion. Above, there's LED lighting, two large hatches with blinds and mosquito nets, in addition to three small forward-facing portholes also with mosquito nets. From the saloon, we head down three stairs, turn to the right and we find one of four staterooms. Through the small door at the head of the queen-sized bed, there's a small berth, designed for an infant. If the infant tries to get out of the berth, it has to crawl over the sleeping parents. Each of the four staterooms have an ensuite bathroom or head. There's a shower cubicle, vanity cupboard, washhand basin, and behind the door. A Jabsco quiet flush electric toilet with a full-sized bowl. From the port forward stateroom, we go back across the stairway and into the port aft stateroom. There's storage under the queen bed, cupboards to the side, and ample storage space on the shelf to the side of the bed, with a vanity stool at the foot of the bed. There's an ensuite head comprising a shower cubicle, vanity cupboard, wash hand basin, and a full size electric toilet. From the saloon, it's back down three steps, turn right into the starboard aft stateroom. There's storage under the queen sized bed, plus two cupboards on the side, one is behind the door. By lifting the mattress, there is additional storage, the latter is true for all the staterooms. There's an ensuite head comprising a shower cubicle, vanity cupboard, wash hand basin and full-sized electric toilet, mirroring the port head configuration. From the starboard aft stateroom, we go across the stairway and into the starboard forward stateroom. Each stateroom has subtle differences between them. Once again, storage under the queen bed, cupboards to the side, and an identical head, 